So we are working on this. What this is, is a drive mechanism for a 3D printer, at least one that I think might be an interesting drive mechanism for a 3D printer. Because what it's able to do is that point there, it can move that point there to any point in space. And if you want to see more about this, check out the earlier videos, but that's what it does. Now, there is an issue with 3D printing in terms of accuracy. We need it to be absolutely accurate. So doing something like this with gears, because gears have backlash, it can lead to errors of accuracy. And I decided that one way to go might be with the friction drive, because friction drives actually, they are incredibly accurate and get down to a nanometer scale, but they do have a problem. And the problem is, they have a tendency to slip. So if they slip, you can never be 100% sure where that point is. And of course, that will kill any attempt at 3D printing. It's one of the benefits of um, things like gears and tooth belts and stepper motors. On those things, they don't slip. So if you turn a stepper motor a certain amount of times, it will turn a gear or a belt a certain distance and you can infer where the point is. With a system like this, where you're using something that might slip, you can't infer it, you have to read it directly. And of course that means having a sensor right there that can read that point in space to brilliant accuracy. Now for a long time, to be able to do that in real time was actually pretty expensive and kind of difficult to do. Until these came along. This is an optical mouse. Now when I was start, first started using computers, uh, mice were really just balls that you measured the distance on and it was translated into a change in X and a change in Y and you could read that. Optical mice are incredible things when you think about them. Now I paid seven pounds for this thing and in here is a truly astounding bit of electronics. Now this is obviously a PS2 style optical mouse and we can get into it just by undoing this screw at the bottom. And there is the electronics we're looking for, right there. What that actually is, is a tiny camera. What the tiny camera does is takes a picture of the surface that the mouse is moving across and then immediately takes another picture. It compares the two pictures and it can work out the distance it's moved in X and Y incredibly quickly. All of that processing is done on this tiny board. Down those wires what is sent, well there's a, a power supply obviously, but the data sent is the change in X and the change in Y. And what we really need to do is get this out and somehow get to that change in X, change in Y, because that will give us a way of creating a sensor to detect the change of movement of our friction drive. Now we can disconnect the wire just by pulling out the connector and here is the camera right there and it's got this little lens array that slots over the camera and there's a light that shines onto it to light it up. This bit is the scroll wheel bit so we don't need that bit. So this bit backwards we don't need. It's only this, this, this and this that we actually need. Now bear in mind this whole mouse costs seven pounds. So the price of that must be a couple of pounds I suppose. The price of that section there is probably a pound or so. It's incredible that you can get that into such a small package. That little camera, it doesn't take a great picture, but that little camera will take a picture and the chip will resolve that for you into a change in X and a change in Y. It's mind-blowing, but of course we need to get to it. The way we're going to get to it is with this, an Arduino. So if you have a look at the PS2 connector, you'll notice there's six pins. And of course these pins have designations and we can look up the pinouts and that will tell us that pin one is the data, pin two isn't connected, pin three is the ground, pin four is the power supply, pin five is the clock and pin six also isn't connected. And if we have a look at our mouse connector is right here, we've got four wires on it. So each of those four wires must go to a pin at the end of the PS2. What you do is you get yourself a multimeter, put it on resistance, stick one in one end of the wire and touch the pins and the other one in order and you'll soon find out which wire goes to which pin. Now on this one it turns out that pin one is the blue wire, 
pin three is the gray wire, pin four is the white wire, and pin five is the green wire. And what that means is that the blue wire is data, the gray wire is ground, the white wire is the power supply, and the green wire is the clock. So once we know what those pins are doing, we can basically chop the head off the PS2, and solder on four wires. These four wires have pin connectors that can go straight into the Arduino. And I've tried to copy the color, apart from the gray that I had to make black because I didn't have a gray. So now we know what each one of those does as it connects to the mouse. And we have a connector we can stick in the Arduino. Now you can also get Arduino PS2 connectors if you don't want to do that, but it is pretty easy to do and sort of interesting to find out anyway. Now in terms of the Arduino, the blue and the green are the data and the clock. The blue is the data and it goes to pin 2 on the Arduino. The green is the clock and it goes to pin 3. What is now black of course is the ground and it goes to ground and white is the actual 5 volt supply that will plug into the 5 volt supply. So there it is, all plugged back in. I've plugged the wire straight back into the mouse where it came from, and the other end I've plugged into the Arduino. And you can see that I've got ground and five volts in, and then pins two and three on the digital side to take the data and the clock. I mean, it is astonishingly simple. This is, there's nothing to do particularly. It's all done by the Arduino, and so of course what we need now is a bit of software. Now then, I am 100% standing on the shoulders of giants because the software is available quite easily, actually. The first thing you need to do, of course, is download the Arduino IDE, which you can get from here. Click download and install it. Once you've installed it, you're going to need this. Now, there are quite a few mouse handlers around, but Getis Mouse Handler is particularly good, and you can get it from the web address up in the top there. When you're at this page, hit code, download the zip, and then swap to the IDE. Once we're on the IDE, we have a nice fresh open screen. Go to sketch, include library, add a zip library, and it'll take you to wherever you downloaded that file to, and there it is. What we want is the compressed folder, hit on that and click open, and it will import that into the Arduino libraries. Once you've got it imported, what you can do is hit file and then hit examples and look for the one that we just did. If you can't find it, you can just go to open and then back to downloads. And here we see that I actually extracted that and we've got something called basic mouse. That is the example script, the INO file. Click on it and click open. And it'll open it in a new sketch. Here you can see that we've got the two pins. Get is chose five and six. I want two and three. So change those to three. And then you can compile it and upload it. Now in the original Getis file, what you need to do is check that the serial is set at 9600 which is the uh, speed for the serial port. And then it was an awful lot of stuff that he was printing. All we're really interested in is the X movement and the Y movement. So that's all that I've selected for printing. So now if I plug in my Arduino into the computer, upload that sketch, we can start the serial monitor and it will start running the program. And as you can see, if we look in the serial monitor, it's doing zero, zero, zero because I haven't moved the mouse. If I move the mouse, then we start to get the amount of movement there being reported to the program from me moving the mouse. That's absolutely brilliant. So that was a piece of cake. I mean, it was already there. All I had to do was put it together and it was pretty simple to do. And it turns out that we've changed our optical mouse into a position sensor. Now these optical mice have a resolution of a kind of a thousand dots per inch. And if you work that out, it works out to be about 0 0.024 millimeters, which is minuscule. I mean, it's an order of magnitude different from the print, which is 0.2 millimeters. So we've got plenty of accuracy for the position of it. So this, remember, reads change in position. So it'll change position and then go to zero and only reads a change in position. That in itself is not an issue as long as we have a home position. 
Because if we have a home position at zero, zero, and when we change the position for every change of position, we add it on, then of course we will get the actual position as the summation of the changes, whether it's positive or negative. Of course, it does mean that we need a point which is home. And of course, these things come with three switches. There's a, a switch here, here, and underneath here, when you push the scroll wheel, there's a little switch there. There's a resistor there, of course, to take sensor information to tell you what you're doing that with the scroll wheel or not. But we have three switches. Now, of course, we wouldn't leave them in this position. You just desolder them and solder a micro switch somewhere where you want the home position to be. So it will zip to the home position, hit the micro switch, set it at zero, and then as the print head moves, it will add the changes positions together to create an absolute position. So we've created a position sensor that we can now use on this. And that's the idea. Because we won't use it like this. There's a couple of gubbins on there I want to take off because who wants a scroll wheel and I want to move the switch. And the overall size of it is tiny. So I want to incorporate it into this. And of course that means doing the design and the 3D print for that. But the sensor itself, how to work out position, well, it turns out it can be a fiver to buy the whole mouse, and I could have as many as I wanted running from an Arduino, because we're only using two data lines, which is like nothing really. So pretty cool, I thought, and well worth sharing, because this could be used for loads of things. I mean, I know Luke at the moment is planning on making a gaming chair where he wants position sensors and steering wheel sensors, and this is going to perform that function. Can't wait to tell him going to be over the moon. I want to share it with you in case you find it useful because there are of course other things you can do with that than just record the position of a print head. It's easy to do. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.